All right, we're going to try this again. I realized as I was going through um, the things I wanted to cover with you guys that the video was not um, connecting. I had a poor Wi-Fi connection. So let me try to do this over again. I apologize. Um, so again, it's Stephanie Parra with the Arizona Education Association um, giving you an update today on a Saturday afternoon. Um, I unfortunately didn't have time to get to it yesterday, but wanted to make sure that we did um, share an update of kind of where we are in the legislative process and what happened this week. Um, so I will walk through that with you guys. Um, we just wrapped up the sixth uh, week of the legislative session. The legislature completed hearing bills in committees this week. Uh, so that means if bills did not get a hearing, um, thus far in the, the committees that they were assigned to, they're essentially considered dead or no longer moving through the process. Um, there are ways for bills to kind of come back and, and we definitely will continue to monitor um, for any bills uh, that are zombie bills that come back to life. Um, but um, for now, if bills did not, um, did not make it uh, through a committee. Um, like I said, they're, they're no longer moving forward through the process. Um, so for next week, that means that we do not have any education committees coming up next week because it is uh, considered crossover week. Uh, so this is when bills that are still moving through the process are transmitted uh, to the opposite chamber for the next phase of the legislative process there will, um, while there won't be um, education committees, we will definitely still see rules, um, appropriations will meet, um, and the legislature will, will caucus and will conduct a lot of floor action during crossover week to kind of um, get the bills uh, moved over to the, to the opposite chamber. And so with that said, there are a couple of bills that I do want to flag um, that are still moving through the process that are of concern. Um, House Bill uh, 2015, there's essentially two bills in the process that are still moving through um, that we are classifying as red for ed um, retaliation bills. House Bill 2015, um, this bill is uh, one that moved out of House Education this week has overly broad and very vague language. Um, and because of that, um, the uh, opportunity for your First and 14th Amendment rights to be violated uh, definitely increases with the changes to um, ARS 15511 in this House bill. And additionally, um, House Bill 2026 um, essentially creates, amends the same uh, statute, 15511, um, and creates an incentive for people uh, to sue teachers if that the individual believes that you have used uh, public uh, resources or school resources to influence the outcome of an election. Any resident would be able to bring forward a lawsuit um, and and you could you could be fined up to five thousand dollars to be paid directly to that individual um, if the the suit goes their way um, and so again this this bill is just um, it's wrong in so many ways um, and and those two bills are bills that AEA is definitely um, strongly opposed to and we're advocating against um, so as you uh, you know, hear from us. Um, if you haven't signed in a position on those bills, definitely go into the request to speak system and sign in opposition um, of the bills. Um, we will continue to monitor them as they move through the process um, and make sure that we can we can stop those from come, becoming law. There's also a couple of bills related to tax cuts that I would like to um, continue to flag for you all. Senate Bill 1460, this is the digital goods tax exemption, um, and Senate Bill 1166 related to tax conformity. This is the new um, version of tax conformity. You'll recall that the one that made it to the governor's desk a few weeks ago uh, was vetoed, um, and so legislators are now running a different tax conformity uh, proposal through the process. Uh, both of these bills we think will negatively impact um, or specifically the digital goods bill will negatively impact uh, Proposition 301, uh, potentially the general fund, 
Um, and then with tax conformity, um, we definitely want to see the state conform, but we want uh, the state to absorb um, or take in the um, the revenue and, and uh, funnel that revenue to our public schools. Um, so we'll continue to monitor that and, and uh, share our position with legislators on those two bills as well. Um, there is a bill related to teacher evaluation, Senate Bill 1071. We have flagged it for you before. Uh, Senate Bill 1071 did make it out of the Senate Education Committee this week. Um, and it was amended in a way that moved our position from opposed to neutral. Um, we did not move all the way to support because as a general principle, AEA uh, strongly believes that data um, should not be in teacher evaluations, uh, that quantitative data should not uh, be in, in teacher evaluations. We believe that teacher evaluations should be a tool for professional development and growth. Um, and not used as a whipping stick uh, for um, educators. And so the, um, the bill as amended would now reduce the quantitative data portion from 33 to 50% down to 20 to 33%, which is good. Um, it also allows districts um, to design their own evaluation systems, um, the State Board of Education no longer has to adopt the framework. It goes down to the local governing board level um, and districts um, get to decide of the remaining uh, portion of uh, quantitative data. The districts get to decide what um, data to use in those evaluations. And so they can, um, we are, excuse me, we're encouraging our locals to work with their districts, work with administrators uh, to design evaluations that um, if data is going to, you know, we're going to have to continue to use data, that that data be valid, reliable, and directly attributable to the teacher that's being evaluated. Um, so the, the more that we can work um, at the local level to ensure that, the better. And that's what we will definitely um, encourage our, our locals to do. And then finally, um, I wanted to flag and have you all save the date to join me down um, at the Capitol during your upcoming spring break. We will have AEA Lobby Days on March 12th, 19th, and 26th. Um, so definitely want you to plan to join us when your districts are on spring break. Um, these are all on Tuesdays um, during the week. The Senate Education Committee meets on Tuesdays. Um, so we'll have an opportunity to, um, to hear from legislators, have lunch with legislators, and then um, uh, participate in, and observe the, um, the Senate uh, Education Committees. So visit ArizonaEA.org slash capital visit. Um, again, ArizonaEA.org slash capital visit, and I'll put that link in the comments below um, to RSVP, and I hope to see you all in March. Um, have a great weekend, everybody, and um, thanks for joining me today. <laughs>